Hi everyone, welcome or welcome back again to my YouTube channel. My name is Osere Me, and in today's video, I'm going to be showing you guys how to go about the cutting and sewing of this beautiful dress I'm putting on right now. So if this is something you're interested in learning how to make, definitely keep on watching. And if you're still yet to subscribe to the channel, please hit on the subscribe button and turn on the notification bell. And let us get started with this video. Time is barely on our side. To make this dress, you will need about two yards of any fabric of your choice. What I have here is two yards. You can use two and a half yards depending on your size. Also, you will need a bias. This bias here is called velvet bias, if I'm being correct, but that's what I know it as. It's quite different from the other bias that we are used to. So when you get there, just tell them that you want a bias that looks like a velvet. For the velvet bias, I have three yards. So now I'm going to go ahead and fold my fabric to cut out the body of the dress. Now I have my fabric folded into two. We are going to be cutting the front first. Now when you are folding your fabric, you want to make sure what you are folded is going to be enough. So you are going to measure from the center of your fold. So from here, I first of all measured my shoulder measurement divided by two. And from that point, I measured again for the length of my sleeve which I wanted to be about 10 inches. So I realized that I had more than enough fabric and decided to fold it again. So after I was done, I went ahead to iron out the fabric as it's folded into two. Next, you're going to mark a straight line at the top of your fabric like I'm doing here. This is going to be the starting line for our measurement. So I'm just going to mark it all the way across. This line I'm marking is also referred to as the shoulder line. So after marking out the shoulder line from the center of your fold, you're going to come in by one inch. This one inch is for you to be able to have that slit opening that we have in front of this dress. So I'm going to mark this one inch all the way from the top to the bottom of my fabric. So just basically at the center, mark one inch from the top to the bottom. Please remember that we are currently drafting out the front pattern. The only reason why we are having a one inch allowance in front is because there is a slit in front of this dress. So now I'm going to draw out the neckline. So from this slit allowance that I just drew all the way down, I went in by three inches and then I'm going to come down by six and a half inches for the neck depth. So I'm going to go ahead and connect both together. Please notice that I am taking this neckline measurement from this uh, slit allowance line, not from the um, center of the fabric. Okay, so from the same line, I came in by half of my shoulder measurement and I marked it. So from this half of my shoulder measurement point, I'm going to measure the length I want my sleeve to be. So I want it to be about 9 inches by the time I'm done. So I marked it here at 10 inches. Okay, so I'm going to come down from this point by 1 inch for my shoulder slope. And I'm going to connect it into the top of the neckline. So just like you see me doing like this. So as you have already seen, we are cutting the dress alongside the sleeves. So we're not going to be cutting the sleeves separately. So from the shoulder slope here, I came down by 8 inches for the width of my sleeve. Okay, and I'm going to just connect it like this. So guys, once this is done, the next thing you want to do is from the shoulder line, you're going to measure down. On the rest of the body so you're going to mark shoulder to waist measurement so mark your shoulder to waist measurement for me it is 15 i'm going to go ahead and just draw this line across okay after the shoulder to waist measurement i am going to now mark my shoulder to bust point i should have marked this first before the waist but anyways my shoulder to bust point is 10 inches so i marked it here and i'm going to draw a line across as well so now I have the shoulder line, bust line, waistline. So the next line I'm going to mark is shoulder to hip. So I marked it here at 22 and I'm drawing a straight line across as well. So the last line is going to be your shoulder to the hem, which is the length that you want your dress to be. For me, I marked it at 35. So I'm going to draw this across as well. Guys, we're done drawing out all the lines. We have the shoulder line. The bust line, waistline, hip line, and then we have the hemline at the bottom. So now I'm going to go ahead and add my body measurements. I'm going to be taking all the measurements from the straight line we marked earlier. So from here on the bust line, I marked my bust measurement divided by four, and then I added an extra one and a half inch for ease and stitching allowance. On the waistline, I marked my waist measurement divided by four, 
and I'm adding the same one and a half inch. Please make sure you're taking all your measurements from the line you drew earlier, okay? Now on the hip line, hip measurement divided by four, I marked it and added stitching allowance as well. And then I just decided to mark the same measurements I have on the hip line down on the hem. Please, when you're marking your measurements, make sure you're taking them from this straight line here and not from the center of the fabric, okay? So once you're through with this, now I came down to the armhole. I felt that it was a bit too wide, so I came in by one inch. And from there, I just went ahead to curve it into the bust that I marked. And then from the bust down to the waist, as you can see, right? So connect the armhole to the bust line, the bust line to the waistline, the waistline to the hip, just like a symmetry like this. You can do it with your free hand, but I just decided to use my ruler here because I felt um, it would give better curves, okay? So now I'm connecting from the hip line down to the hem. It's just basically a straight line as you can see. So this is all for the drafting of the front pattern. You can see we've drafted the sleeve alongside the body of the dress. So I'm going to just fold in this allowance here before I cut the neckline, okay? So that when I'm done, it doesn't become shorter. So it's better it has this shape where you're done cutting, okay? Just fold in the neckline area before you cut out your V-shape and then go ahead and cut out the rest of the body. So I'm done cutting out the front piece. As you can see, I went ahead to separate it into two at the center. I'm going to be using it to cut out the back as well. So what I decided to do was to fold in the allowance that I left for the slit in front. So I just fold it in just basically from the line I drew earlier so that I'll be able to use it to cut out the back pattern. It's actually very simple. Just fold away the allowance. So once you're through with this, I went ahead to fold my fabric into two again for the back, as you can see. Now for the zipper allowance, this one is zipper allowance for the back. I measured one and a half inch. Remember for the front, I measured one inch. That's because it's just for slits. Now for the back, I measured one and a half inch. I drew it from top to bottom. And now I'm just going ahead to place my front pattern on it. I'm placing the front pattern exactly on the line that I drew across. And I'm going ahead to pin it down. So the front pattern should be starting exactly from that zipper allowance line, okay? So now to get the back neckline, I'm going to just extend the shoulder line into the rest of what I have on the back pattern. And then for the depth of the back neckline, I'm going to come down by one and a half inch here. And then I'm just going to connect it into the rest of the neckline. So I can take this into the zipper allowance and then curve it to meet the front, okay? So the depth is one and a half inch. The width is exactly the same thing as what I have on the front pattern. So I've gone ahead to cut it out now. And then for the rest of the body, you are just going to trace the front into the back pattern. And then also go ahead and separate the back pieces into two. So once you're through with that, we're basically done. I'm going to remove my front piece and then leave the back pattern away for now. The back piece, sorry. Now I'm going to open up these areas I folded in earlier. And what I'm going to do is from this neckline here, I'm going to stitch all the way to about 5 inches or 6 inches above the hem of this fabric. So I'll just measure about 6 inches away from the hem and I'll mark it. So I'll make a straight stitch from here to here. So after making my straight stitch, this is what it looks like. I've gone ahead to iron it out and you can see what it looks like here. So you make sure you are stitching exactly on the line that you made earlier. So after making this stitch, what I want to go ahead and do is to fold in this area here, the allowance that I have. So at first I wanted to fold just a part of it, but what I now ended up doing on the sewing machine was folding it from the top to the bottom. So just go ahead and fold it in all the way from the bottom to the top, which is the neckline area of the fabric. So this way, you'll be able to have it looking neat all the way from the bottom to the top. So after doing this, the next thing I'm going to go ahead and do is on the neckline, I'm going to go ahead and pipe it with my bias. So I'm just going to, first of all, like stitch it around once and then use it to turn the neckline. So I'll just pin it around first of all so that you guys will see what I mean. So the areas I'm pinning is going to be the first area where I'm going to stitch down before I use it to turn the neckline. I'm sure a lot of you guys already know how to go about this.
So I'll go ahead and make my first stitch on the areas I pinned down and then turn it over and then make a stitch from the inside. So after I was done, this is what I have. It looks very neat and you can see the area I told you guys I was going to stitch from top to bottom just to secure in place, looking nice as well. So we have our slit area looking very neat and we have everything, the neckline, everything just looking very neat. So this is what yours should look like when you are done. So now the next thing I'm going to do is to place the velvet bias so you're just going to be placing it on top of the neckline so i'm going to start from one part i'm placing it from one side of the neckline and i'm just arranging it to follow the center stitch that we have so it's going to be on one side okay so i'm going ahead to just pin it down from one side of the neck all the way through to the end so you're going to stop it on the end of the fabric is actually very simple you're just going to be top stitching on both sides of this bias to secure it in place on the sewing machine so i'm i'm done pinning this side down i'm going to do the exact same thing for the other side as well so from here i'm going to go ahead and pin it all the way from top to bottom So I'm done pinning it down now and this is what it looks like. So I'm going to use my sewing machine to just secure both sides on the sewing machine. When you get to this part, you're going to notice that you might need to make a little bit of fold before you stitch it down because of the bend on that area. You will do it on the both sides. So I'm just going to just secure both parts on the sewing machine. So after I was done, like I said, I needed to make very tiny fold. You will notice it when you're actually sewing. So just fold it in a bit and that will basically be all. So I am done um, top stitching the both of them as you can see. And that's it for the front pattern. We are going to go ahead now and work on the back. I have already piped the back neckline with my normal black bias. So now what I want to do on the back is from this area where I marked, I'm going to make a straight stitch. There is no slit at the back. So I'm going to make a straight stitch and on the upper part, I'm going to be fixing a zipper. So for the zipper, what I did was to pin it down first on my table just to make sure that I am going to be fixing it in a way that prevents the zipper from showing when you put on the dress. This is because I'm using a zipper that doesn't match the color of fabric I'm working with. So after I was done, you can see I have been able to successfully cover away the zipper even though it is inside. Okay, if you would like to see a tutorial on how to go about this, please let me know in the comment section. So I went ahead to fix the zipper with just secure it with my sewing machine. After I was done, this is what it looks like. Okay. So now I am going ahead to join the front and the back pieces together since I'm done fixing the zipper and sewing the center back. So I'm just going to go ahead and pin down the shoulder areas of both sides. So just go ahead and pin down the shoulders on both the left and the right. And I'm going to go back to the sewing machine and just stitch down the shoulders. After I was done stitching it down, this is what I had. I went ahead to search the rough edges so that it looks neat. And now I'm going to go ahead and fold the sleeve. So just fold it in with about half an inch twice, just like you see me doing like this. And I'm just going to go ahead and pin it down. So I'll just head over and use my sewing machine to stitch down the areas that I've pinned on both sides. After I was through stitching down the sleeve, this is what I have. So we're almost done. The next thing I want to do now is to add a pocket to the um, side of my dress. So I have my fabric folded into four. I want to cut the two pockets together, but on this side where we have one opening, I'm just going to open it up. So like this, all right? So I'm just taking it away from the top because I feel like it's definitely too long for a pocket. Now from the top first, I'm going to mark the length that I want the opening of my pocket to be, okay? The whole of the pocket, and that was seven inches. So I marked two points to give me that seven inches. And from the center, I came in by about six inches for the width of the pocket. Now, you don't necessarily have to follow these six inches, but you just want to make sure that at least the curve you're making for the pocket is following it. Now for the depth of the pocket, I'm just going to do about 12 inches. So I'm just going to follow it like this. You might feel this is too deep. It depends on how deep you want the pocket to be at the end of the day. You can actually do um shorter than 
12 inches as you can see i'm just doing a freehand pocket here this is an easy way i go about cutting out my pocket so once you're true cutting it out you can see how i curved it around it's a freehand cutting there are no special measurements to this particular thing i'm doing here this is just a method i use to cut out pockets okay so once you're true you have your pockets for the both sides you're going to have two two all together four right so two for the left two for the right so once you're done you're going to bring your fabric you're going to have to join the sides of the dress first before you can actually fix the pocket all right so what i'm going to do is from the shoulder i'm going to measure down to 17 inches which is where i want my pocket to start from okay and now from here I'm just going to mark the other point where the pocket will stop. You can actually just measure this. Remember, it was 7 inches opening, okay? Now, on the sewing machine, you're going to stitch from the sleeve to this point and then from this point to the end of the dress. You are going to be leaving the opening for the um, pocket. You're not going to be stitching it down. So, we're going to do the exact same thing for this other side. So, from the shoulder, I'm going to measure the where the pocket is going to start from, the pocket opening, which is at 17 now you can just measure what you have on the other side and just replicate it on this side so it's about seven inches i'm marking it here seven inches so i'll stitch from here to here leave the opening and then stitch it down so i'm going to make sure that the areas i marked for the pocket i do not stitch them so after i was done stitching the sides you can see the opening that i have here can you see i left it open did the same thing on this side as well so i'm going to be placing the pockets this is one of it it's two pieces okay so you pick it like this and place it on the allowance that you have on the opening that you left. I don't know if you guys understand. On the allowance, you're going to have two parts. So you pick one and place that area where you have that your straight, the straight part of the pocket. Just pin it exactly with the allowance on the opening that you have. So this is one side, right? So I'm going to do the exact same thing on this other side. So turn it over. Make sure that you're stitching it toward the wrong side. You're pinning it toward the wrong side. So I'm going to just go ahead and pin this area down. So these areas you're pinning are going to be the first places you will stitch when you get to the sewing machine. So stitch these areas down first. So you stitch them separately. And then after that, you're not going to go ahead and now join the two pieces together. So first stitch them separately. So after stitching them separately, you're not going to stitch this area that i'm pinning down so you're going to now stitch all the way around the curve of the pocket but first you must stitch down the straight parts separately so once you're true go ahead and just um stitch down the curved area just like i've pinned around and that'll basically be all for the pocket after i'm true with that i'm just going to hem weave everywhere to just make it look very neat so guys as you can see this is what it looks like like I said, I weaved all the areas around. This is what it looks like. All right. Make sure that the first area you stitch is the part that is joining the fabric to the pocket. So once you're through with that, go ahead and stitch the curved areas. After I was done with the pocket for the other side, I went ahead to fold the edges of the fabric of the dress, the hem. And that is all for the making of this dress. You can see our pockets looking nice and pretty here. So yeah, thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you find it helpful and I will definitely be seeing you guys in my next tutorial. Bye.